Yeah, bang, bang, Rahul, please press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, years ago, um, Brentford Foot Market. It's a shame it's not there no more because it's a fantastic place, mate. That could have been another common garden. It could have been like all um, clubs, bars, shops, but they ruined it and put silly offices there and swimming pool and it just ruined it, yeah? But it was such a nice place, massive, mate. It was like all, it was a closed shop. Um, to work in there, it was all family. You couldn't get in there unless you was family. I was a very lucky guy to get in there. Um, I started work going in there at night, and my mate Johnny Wells, uh, he he used to Western Peace John. He used to work in a place called Phillips's, and I was to go to work with him, help him out. You know, not get paid for it. Just but obviously I'd not get paid from the company. But Johnny gave me a few bob because we used to feed all the time, yeah, and. Uh, what Johnny used to do is the milk things, milk called a pack. I mean, you got big firm like Philps um, that maybe have a thousand punnets of tomatoes in a, in a week, you know. And so John used to milk them, take two out of each one, and, and all that. You get button boxes, big bushel boxes full of tomatoes, you know. Take one and one. It take all night long. I'll be doing it, you know, and put stacking it from there, and start putting it over there, and putting it back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's how I earned my money. Yeah. Apples the same, pears the same, everything what come in big boxes, John could milk, yeah? And and then the, and the tomatoes come in, in, in sort of like uh, paper paper boxes and they just take two out of there and then put them, it was good. I mean, the job was fantastic and the money was good off of John. And I loved the job, you know? And, and old Jack said, uh, I think his name was Jack said, yeah, Jack said, he, he gave me, he see that I was working and he gave me a job with a firm called Northsides. Um, I got a night job with Northsides and I went over there one night and uh, started on to do the locks, the locks and bits and pieces and the guy jumps out of the lot, he came over to me, he went into one, you fucking, what, what, you trying to nick the gaffer? Nick all the bits and pieces, he said, oh, hold up, mate, whoa, 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 whoa. This guy, this guy looked like a fighter, you know what I mean, a white fighter. And his name was Colin Cracknell, you know. And so he said, what are you doing, mate? I said, well, I've got the job as a night porter, you know. He said, night porter? He said, you're just a kid. I said, no, but, you know, Jack said, give me the job. He went, yeah. he, said, he said, let me tell you something, mate. He said, do the job proper. He said, don't put too much stuff outside. He said, because we've got to put it back. And he said, anything you nick at night time, he said, I'll, I'll buy it off you. He said, I'm going to give you a key to a warehouse across the road. And you put your stuff in there, but at the minute, uh, not yet, yeah, until you get used to the market. I went, lovely, because I was with John, Johnny Wills, and Johnny, me and Johnny Wills used to nick at night time anyway, so I knew the score about nicking things, yeah. So I, went, and I worked there for quite a bit of time, but I was all, what well, I was I was mad at, because I always worked for Greengrocers as a kid, like before that, you know where I used to live, a, Jeffrey, a place called Jeffrey Stewart's in Crown Street. So I knew how to do, prepare things to make them look nice there. So I was to get all the stuff out from the, from the stall, from the inside, the warehouses, and put it out, you know, make nice displays of it. Colin would go mad, because he's got to put it back, me. So he'd go in, I said, oh, and the salesman's go, no, leave it as it is. We'll put it back, leave it, do the exact same thing as you're doing, leave it, yeah? So I went, okay. Anyway, so, Colin uh, started me fighting. Uh, he said, uh, I hear you're a bit of a fighter. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, why don't you come out to my club? And I said, where's that? He said, Hogarth, Hogarth School. So I went down there with a guy called Harry Holland, who was a promoter. Harry Holland was there and Colin was there, both trainers. And, uh, no, sorry, beg your pardon. Before that, they had a place in Southall. I was to go down there, Harry Holland and Colin had a place in Southall. And I was to go down there and spar with Harry and spar with Colin. And I remember getting, I mean, Colin has, uh, uh, has, has taught me a lot, yeah, in in the market, bare fist, you know, fighting. And so he used to fight, me and him used to fight quite a lot in the market, bare fist. And he used to get young when I was to, uh, you know, like really give it him, you know what I mean? And uh, after a while, I mean, you know, you get all your face all smashed to pieces, bare fist, you know, it's like, I mean, I see these things on on uh, my, 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 my podcast now, on, on other people's podcasts when they're doing this fighting. Mate, listen, the market, in the food market, it was a day thing. It was an everyday thing, fighting in the market, mate. It gets, you know, don't worry about that, mate. And proper 
bare fits these guys with losses. These people now, all these people on the media, you know, Joyce's and, and all them sort of people and whatever, they wouldn't last a second, a second in a foot market. They'd get bashed to pieces, mate. They'd get smashed to pieces. They wouldn't last a second. The foot market is like, there was all proper fighters. I mean, everybody, even the salesmen were fighters. You know, you see the salesmen fight with greengrocers and all that. It was like, just a, day, a, a daily thing, you know. And maybe get the old, go to the old eel stall with their eels and the bread. And you go there and you see the green guys just talking to the other, to the porters and the porters is a kick off and then bop, 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 every fights, you know. And but when me and Colin used to fight on uh, the old dirt track, it was called the old dirt track. It wasn't dirty; it was all con it was all concrete and, and bits and pieces. But it was it's an up with the old saying, the old dirt track, yeah. And uh, years ago, of course, it was dirt a dirt track, yes. Yeah? So anyway, so me and Colin used to go out there and fight, you know, and. Yeah, man, I used to go, like, what, four or five rounds with him and get smashed to pieces, you know, but I learned, I learned a lot of him, yeah, for doing this, Colin, and I was, you know, and in the end, after three or four months of it, you're getting harder, you're getting harder, you're getting more, more, you know, you're getting a bit more faster, you're getting turning around and all that, you're, you're learning, yeah? So from Southall, from Southall um, Boxing Club, I got in the room with Colin one day and we was sparring around and uh, mate, I was jabbing his head off, yeah? And he went to me, you keep jabbing me, I'm gonna kick you out the bollocks. You know what I mean? All right, all right, <laughs> this is it's what I'm supposed to do, Cole. I'm gonna smash you to pieces and I knew he would. I knew he could fight, I knew he'd beat me. I was a, a, a kid and I was learning, you know, and he could right have a fight, mate. I mean, in fact, it showed that this guy could have a fight. I mean, there was guys in that market, mate, that, um, I mean, unlicensed fighters, fighters mate, couldn't last with them at, at all. But the reason they didn't get involved in that, because they've got no reason to get involved in that, you know what I mean? They don't need the money, they don't need to be, to, 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 you know, for people to look up to them like that. Colin was this Colin Crackle, he loved the fight, you know? And he, I mean, there's some people in that market, mate, that uh, Colin had to swerve. Um, maybe he might have a shouting match with them, but, he didn't. He, he had to swerve them for fighting. Says so the Wellses, uh, the Wellses, the Wellses. Yeah, Wellses. Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, Arthur Wells, Charlie Wells, Alfie Wells, Tommy Wells. Been, but yeah, so many Wells. He had about six brothers, and all six foot three, six foot four. I don't know if any of you ever um, gone near Kew Bridge, going towards Brentford. You might see on the right hand side, you might see a place that sells all army stuff, like army tops and bits and pieces. Well, that used to belong to Billy Wells, but he died, yeah? Rest in peace, Bill. And he left it to his son. But they had so much property, as you go to Walls Creek, as you go over Q Bridge, on the left hand side, there's a load of shops and, and flats. Billy Wells owned that as well. I mean, the Wellses, they had properties everywhere, yeah? And they was just, I mean, it seemed to be the market Everybody in the market, bar me, <laughs> that had, that had uh, properties and shops, you know, they had uh, greengrocer shops and all that, yeah. But the market was the place to earn money because everybody in there thieved. Everybody was thieving and giving it back to people that thieved it, thieved it, but <laughs> it was a joke, you know what I mean? It was how it was. And the fighting was just, I loved it. I really loved it. Anyway, I was on North Sides and I was to fight with Colin and I was always been nicking and putting it into the warehouse and getting money back from Colin and getting good money really but you know I mean when I say good money Colin was selling it again so he, he was earning a lot more money than me but who cares you know I'm a young kid earning money right fighting I loved it I mean I used to fight uh green grocers I mean see Colin uh fought a guy called Jimmy Wilkinson and they had a fight and Colin bashed Wilkinson up he bashed him up bad and then Wilkinson come back and jumped to a ballista or a lorry and bit uh, Collins bit of Collins ear off, uh, a bit of his ear, and uh, and it was a tough thing. Jim Watson bashed him up back, back, bashed him up that time. But them two, the market, there was always loggerheads. There was always looking at each other, calling each other's names and all that. It was going to kick off again, but it didn't. Yeah, and uh, Colin would go around the market, flash. But as I said, the Wellses and the Wellses, he wouldn't get involved with. Yeah, um, like there was Ginger Carlisle. Ginger Carlisle, um, 
quite guy, ginger, ginger, ginger guy, or ginger here, quite rather well, clever fight. And his, uh, his thing is to uh, have a row with people in a, in the, in, in, in the calf, in a pub, in a bar, or wherever, they was picking up something to put in their mouth, it hit, whack, it hit the bottom of it and smash all your face to pieces. You have a cup of tea or whatever, whack, you know, that was his game, but he could fight the cobbles. And Quali was always weary of him, always weary of Ginger Carlo, and they was always looking at each other, you know, all you can imagine. These are fighters, you know, they're all looking at each other, come on then, they were well. And you had, you had my mate, Martin Worsfold, uh, Martin Worsfold, who got Nick for me, with Nick for me, who was a co-defendant, he could fight, mate. He he, he was a pota on the potatoes, on the potato firm. He had massive arms, mate. Massive, massive shoulders, big arms. All them potato people carrying them potatoes all day long with a big, big sacks of potatoes, you know. And then he went to the, then he went to the uh, paper sacks, then it fifty six pound bags. They was throwing them around like nothing, yeah. I used to press two of them easy. I used to press two of them easy. One arm, yeah, we had, we had competitions of it doing it, yeah, yeah, and um, big apple boxes, massive, massive three tier apple boxes, and nutted them on these sort of caps like this, yeah, walked up the ladder and nutted them four, five, four, four eye, you know, nutted these and apple boxes, big wooden apple boxes, and all that, and uh, yeah, um, so I got to learn a lot in there who would have the Derek Pierce, number one, could have a right fight, big guy. Him and Colin, then you know, always loggerheads. Derek Pierce didn't take a lot of notes of him, mate. He just looked at him and laughed and wanked him off and all that sort of thing. And that is how it was, you know. And but everybody in the market would fight, would fight. And I then I got a job uh, as a porter, as a porter because I've been a night porter and I've been working there for some time. And uh, I then when a, then then. I, 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 something happened, I went away for a bit of time, come back out, I got a job with Deans, yeah? Uh, and uh, this firm, this firm Deans, had a mate of mine called Terry Woods, a blonde guy, good looking mate. The, he was with a bird, like a top model. Honestly, his bird was like a top model. Terry used to always get birds. He, he go out with Terry, he's such a good talker, good looking guy, smart, that's all it wants, you know what I mean? Plenty of money. And me and him was always thieving, going out, breaking into warehouses, nicking all sorts of things, you know what I mean? Because I'm learning. I'm learning as a, as a kid. I've already been nicked twice, so I ain't learning too good, am I? But, you know, it's coming on, you know, and I'm doing it all the time. And I've got, anyway, one day I'm with, I'm with, with uh, Terry Woods, and I've got the listers. Everyone know, know what a list is? It's like... Boom, you slide it up and it's a big back to it and you load all the potatoes on it. It's just massive. You load everything up and you, and you drive around. When in, in the market, you had a dirt track, you had strawberry road block six, block five, block four, block three, block two, block one. You had uh, Elstead's tea shop all out outside Elstead's. You had Munro's, you had market sales, all that, port, all that sort of thing. You had uh, you had all sorts of when they do it, when they do your, your sheet out they tell you whereabouts to go yeah so this day I'm 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 going up by market sales and Mumbo's which was together yeah big big companies massive massive company mate you know what I mean they're just huge yeah and my mate this guy called Red was my mate he was Colin Crack was mate John Big John good looking guy six foot six six foot seven very muscular. Not massive, but muscular, yeah. And uh, this is just winter, uh, summertime, and I've I've got um, no. This is a this was Christmas time. That's right. Sorry, sorry. This was Christmas time. So I've got all nuts on on board, Brazil nuts, walnut, hazelnuts, all sorts of nuts, yeah. Sacks of them, and I've got dates, figs, clementines, and tangerine, all sorts of stuff on the list here. Yeah? Going to this. Uh, going into this uh, lorry. Um, so this lorry is by, by Market Sales, where my mate John works. Well, not my mate, Colin Crapper's mate, but he's, he's all, we're all together as such, yeah? So I got up to this, and the lorry, is supposed to, the lorry driver is supposed to be there uh, to help me take it off because, you know, I mean, there's a lot of valuable stuff in there, and, you know, some of them things are 20 quid, 30 quid, there's a lot of money in them days, yeah? 
So I wanted someone there to stack it up for me and make sure it's secure. But you're waiting there, go, ah, oh, fuck it, you know. So you start chucking it on the back and getting up and stacking it, yeah. Chucking more up, getting up and stacking it. And and I had two two jobs to do, yeah. And and I had two tickets. So this ticket, that I, I was everything was correct. I left it there, um, going the sideboard up, bump, jump, and, and and went to the lister. And as I was going down with the lister, the guy that bought the stuff that was on by the side of me on the lister, about about ten boxes of dates, I think it was all stacked up. He went, oh, he said, mate, sorry, mate. He said, uh, you got more dates there? I said, yes, mate. I said, well, I'm over by Munro's, yeah. I said, I've moved my van. He said, look, I'm so sorry about that. Is my number? I said, I've got your number. He says, oh, my Munro. So I'd already unloaded the other load by by Mark. He said, Munro's and Munro together. So as I'm driving the lister towards Munro's. I went, oh, that what's going on here? I've got these fucking greengrocers, right? Two greengrocers. Puts their van near that near the lawyer that I've just loaded up. And they start taking fucking bags of nuts off. Right? Putting it on the van. Well, fuck me, mate. I jumped up the list. I never even stopped it. The list went crash into a fucking van. I jumped up the list. And now I'm going mad, you know? That big John. Big John, you know, a bit, he's, he, you know, muscular guy, he's tall, six foot four, six foot five. I've gone mad, I'm rushing over to the green grocers, you can't whack, whack. So I'm now fighting two green grocers. I'm only a young boy, I'm not young boy, but I'm not that old, you know. I'm not like growing up properly yet. I'm still, I'm still defining, you know, getting used to this fucking fighting gun. And these green grocers, I stinged into them, you know, fucking nicking the gear. Nicking it and putting it into the wrong van. I went mad, mate. Fucking, I called them up. I was going mad. And then I'm starting fighting them. And then Big John's come out, see it. And we both steamed out these green grocers, mate. We smashed them to pieces. I <laughs> mean, John, John done more of it than I did, but we really give it them, yeah. And they fucking got in the van and fucked off. And we knew that, you know, they are, they are they're, they're Phoebean things or other travelling geezers, right? Uh, you know, you don't really know, or whatever they were, you know, like get, or might not even be green grocers, so just come in, pay, pay to get in and get nickel again and fuck off, yeah. Anyway, so we were expecting, uh, expecting people to come back, but really, not many people come back to the fruit market, mate, because as I said, the fruit market was a closed market, everybody knew everybody, and it doesn't matter who you ever fight with, everybody will stick together, yeah. So John's laughing, laughing, I'm coming back with the, with the lister. And uh, to, to the company, you know, I'm going to Terry Woods. I said, Get me and John. He says, What a big fight. He said, What fight with John? I said, No, no, no. It was the two green grocers nicking stuff off the back of the van or whatever they were. I said, We'd give him a good audience. So he went, Well done, boy. Good boy. And then Colin Cracknell, I said, Colin, I said, Yeah, we And Colin went to John. He said, Yeah, they've well, done really good, really good. So I was so pleased, you know, like fighting now. I was really on it, yeah. And I had so many fights. I mean, in the fruit market, uh, you had places like the old hill stall, uh, where the green grocers, the old hill stall, the dirt track, block, all the strawberry rows, and it is like them places should never have been pulled down because it's history uh, for kids and for people to make. It should make them clubs, bars, shops. It's it was so nice. To, I mean, it was really old, and you know I've got so many memories there of fighting and all that and. Because I've been there quite a bit of time, and I tell you, me and Terry Woods, Terry said to me, fuck me, he said, there's a lorry over there, boy. He said, it's full of nuts and stuff, but it gets out of a warehouse, right? I'm not saying it gets out of his warehouse, right? And, uh, you know, he's, mate, it's got to go, mate. I said, well, how do you mean, it's, it's got to go? He said, but my mate works in the warehouse, right? And he said, what they do, they come in the market, load up, right? load up from this warehouse and then park the lawyers up in the warehouse and fucking and, and then and then come back and then go in the morning take the lawyers it's loaded up i said yeah he said well i said well, what, 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 should I, what should i do he said well get in the back of the lorry i'm <laughs> getting me i said you get in the back get in the back of the lorry go to the warehouse he only parks it up mate and then get out of the back i said say he locks the door not he said no no, no you get him out they're easy to get out of mate do you know what I mean? So I went, okay, do it. So he parked, went there, but he parked up looking for the thing. I see the warehouse. Boom. Lift up the back, goes in, breaks into the warehouse, and I 
I've got this awful fucking hell. So two is 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 on my case. Uh, there's no phones here, no mobile phones, there's nothing like that, yeah? But two is on my case. This geezer that works here has got an ordinary phone in the office, phones up two, he raise in here, he's loading up fucking something, the lorry or whatever. So two he says, yeah, tell him to load the lorry. So I'm getting I'm getting the stuff out of the way, loading the lorry, and Terry's gonna come back. He says, them lorries are so easy to start. He said, I want to lick the lorry, we lick, we just kept loading it up with all these nuts and stuff, that, you know, big wear, massive wear, dates, figs, everything. <laughs> Every nut you can name, we was like loading up. And I was there for about an hour, loading up. I didn't want to take liberties, I didn't want to get captured or nothing like that. So anyway, uh, Terry came, we took the lorry, bump and gone, yeah. So we had a warehouse, uh, we loaded it all, unloaded it into, well, good day's work, yeah, good night's work. Unloaded it all, put it into another warehouse, and uh, drove the lorry, and just dumped the lorry, yeah. And yeah, I was starting to uh, earn good money, mate. I was, uh, but it's like everything, isn't it? As a young boy, um, all you want to do is go down to, uh, uh, to Richmond, to the Ivy shop, and buy all the Ivy, Ivy bows, all the Ben Shermans, all the all the all the all the American shirts, you know, like and all the American trousers and jackets and and look smart, you know. And yeah, yeah. And go to Burton's, yeah, and buy suits out of Burton's, get suit, get a mate. It's mad. You know the things you do as a kid, Burton suits, all all the mohair, tonic mohair suits and all going out at night times. Yeah, and and, and I used to love uh, going out with my mates in went in the market. Because I'd be in the food market, um, sometimes we'd go down the boat house and I'd go down there and when you go in the market, in the, in the boat house, we'd go downstairs, not upstairs, my bushes on the door there. He knew that I was a bit of trouble when I was acting, acting the white heart and acting with a big fight that night. So he's telling me to like, behave yourself, boy, and that guy's about six, nine in films, my bush, you know, so. I went downstairs and sometimes I'd go there and people go, oh, look, it's Ray Hill, he's coming here. There's going to be trouble because I was always fighting. <laughs> Never stop fighting. Honestly, he's always fighting, yeah. And uh, one night uh, we had a big fight, yeah, massive fight. And um, done these people and uh, the bouncers got involved, dragged us outside, gave a few clumps. I had a fight with this big bouncer, um, took a few clumps. Um, I come second best, mate, and I didn't want to be second best. So I kicked him up the groin, uh, knocked him down, and then punched him all around the gaff, yeah? And then got out of there a bit quick, as quick as we could get out there, but we couldn't go back there uh, for a long time, you know, because uh, it had come on top for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so what I did, so in, in the end, I, I, I told Colin, Colin Cracknell and a few others, about eight of us went down there, and uh, honestly, I mean, even even uh, the club, the boathouse, yeah? Moy Bush, all that little firm, all them bouncing on the door. New Crackle, new Colin Crackle, Colin Crackle was. Uh, new Harry Holland, who Harry Holland was. And all the fighters, so they let me, they let it go. The bouncer that I had a bit of trouble with, um, I went up to him, shook his hands, and he just said, all right, mate, he said, forget about it, you know? He said, but you hurt me when you kicked me out of the groin. I said, you hurt me when you punched me in the face, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it, like, it was, I loved the market, man. I loved it, um, meeting all the people that I met, the Welleses, the Willses, um, Collins. I mean, my best mate in there, one of my best mates in there was Bobby Collins, Wacker Collins, uh, Philip Collins. I mean, you know, they, they, they're people that, that that were green, proper greengrocers, all their dads, their uncles, everything, and greengrocer shops down Devonshire Road, all around them places, Chiswick High Street, they had stalls, Philip Collins, had stalls down the High Street, Chiswick fruit stalls, and then people are workaholics, uh, they work 24-7, they never stop, they go to the market, they work in the market, they buy stuff at the market, they nick out the market and they take it to their shops, then they get double bubble, triple bubble for what they're selling, and they and they just become absolutely minted. And I've got lots and lots of money doing things, not doing things straight, but not doing things like I was doing, armed robberies and all them sorts of things, where the risk of getting caught is big risk, mate. 75% out of the number you're gonna get captured, yeah. 
one day and then you lose your liberty and lose everything. But they, they might nick just tomatoes and oranges and apples and pears and bananas and get just a slap on the wrist, you know, told off by the market people and that's it. And I mean, never happens. Never happened. Everybody, everybody in them stalls is the milk that about. You must have had 500 stalls in that market. Everybody in there was thieving, yeah? And, and um, you know, putting stuff in big boxes, bushel boxes. And, you know, uh, a couple of guys in the market had good jobs uh, in there. And, and then, then they'd buy lorries, then they'd buy, buy the market and, and buy boxes, bushel boxes. They'd buy them off the greengrocers and they'd sell them, you know, like it's sell them to the growers. Yeah, there's so much money to, to, to earn. And I was one of the ones that, uh, that didn't, didn't do it. And all my pals have got big, I mean, the Collinses, uh, they all got big shops, fruit shops. I mean, Philip Collins, a mate of mine, Christian Morgan from KON TV, he goes and sees Philip and talks to Philip about me. And Philip's got some great stories. His son's an uh, uh, MA fighter. Uh, yeah, he's uh, a good fighter. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a, like, they're all, the, Collins is a big fighting family, yeah. Uh, and Bobby, he used to work for a guy called Strongs. And Strongs uh, was his name because he was the strongest guy that ever existed in the market. He was phenomenally strong, big guy with glasses, had to be 21, 22 stone, but massive. He retired as a porter, but he had his own, sh his own stall. This is what happens in the market, mate. They're all absolutely minted. Joe Strong, I mean, come on. He was minted, mate, you know. It all come from the market. He had a big house down Gunsby Avenue. He's like, I don't know, it's just the market, well, the way the market is. Everybody's earning money, yeah? Uh, I started earning money, bit of a fool. Um, wanted to earn more money. Instead of consistently earning 200 quid a week, 300 quid a week in them days, in the early 60s, 68, 69s, them sort of places, you know, when I'm earning two, three hundred quid a week, was a fortune. It's like a thousand pound a week now. Uh, I'm not happy. I want more money, and I started doing robberies and getting myself in trouble, getting myself nicked, coming out doing the exact same thing. Where well, I should have stuck in the fruit market with all the greengrocers. I mean, you know, to be a guy who's who's got a reputation, respected a rep reputation like Conny Crackle. Um, you know, uh, he, he's He's an old man now, uh, but he goes to the gym three or four times a week. He, he trains for an hour. He's still very, very fit. Good looking guy. Uh, just fit. He's just in him. All them grown grocers are very fit. Big, big men, yeah? And yeah, mate. And it's a shame that they shut that market down, mate, because it made men. It made men and it built Brentford, yeah? It built Brentford because uh, all the pubs around Q, all them pubs, all them caps, and the well is at the one inside Elsteads, all them caps outside and pubs, they opened up like three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and it was there opening up earning money. So you can imagine everybody there was earning money from the market, yeah? And when it shut down, you can imagine everybody went skin and sold certain parts of pubs and made turn pubs into big hotels. If you go down by the market, uh, go down by Q Bridge, before you get going to Q Bridge, you'll notice a big hotel there, a big pub, that used to be a big pub, and that was packed. And uh, across the road, you had another pub that was packed with greengrocers and porters. You know, like, and businesses, cafes, were packed with greengrocers and porters. You know, it was a shame what they did to it, you know. It's, you know, the government, uh, someone's like, you know, the rent, the rent, I suppose, in the market become too, become too much and you know, people couldn't cope with it. So then, then uh, they moved to, uh, I think it's Hayes, Hayes Market there. Uh, and it's uh, every stall in there now is run by Indians and it's all forklifts and it's lost it. It's lost. The only thing they got in the market in, in that one in Southport, where it was, Heston, whereabouts it is, is they got the, the fountain that was in the market. The big, as you walk, drove through the market, you had a big fountain in there, 
a big thing, a big like uh, for for Brentford, for Brentford to so, so let you know you're driving into Brentford, big fountain, yeah, and that's now uh, uh, Haston, um, and it's full of Indians. There's no white, there's white people that work there, but all Indians own the stalls. It's just took it over, ruined it, yeah, just absolutely ruined it. Uh, the market is uh, not the market anymore that I knew. I went there and I couldn't believe it. There are some some of my, my, my mates uh, still working there at my age, yeah, and they're still big, <laughs> all lumps, yeah. You got Artie Noah, uh, you got Artie Noah when I was a kid. Artie Noah is one of the oldest guys in Acton, and uh, I took over, but Artie Noah could have a white fight, and him, Freddie Green. Yeah, they can have a white fight, mate, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, then people were still in the market. Uh, Philip Collins goes to the market. Bobby Collins, I think they're all in uh, Isla Sheppey. They all got big places down the Isla Sheppey and all them places. Uh, they own it. No, no, I own that Isla Sheppey uh, and all around there. Yeah, it's like it's a shame that something, something like that, you know, is gone. You know. He's gone like that thing behind me, right? It's even Worm and Scrubs Prison. It's not, listen, it isn't nice here. Yeah? But that building there shows you what it is. And this one is one of the best ones, prisons like that, that ever existed with that building at the back. But if they take it down and put something else up, they've lost, it's lost, it's lost that bit in it, it's lost that what it is, what it was, or what it is, this, it'll always be there, it'll always be a prison, but it lose that. You've got to remember that was built for French prisoners of war, yeah? Yeah, and in there they've got gun turrets, yeah, big gun turrets in there, and they've got, uh, they've got uh, a big um, walkway underneath, right, from the prison, that goes to a railway station or a railway where it's going, where it's to take all the prisoners from there, underneath, bringing them into the scrubs. And that still exists. Not that it exists, it's all filled in, but you know, it is what it is. It's still there, and parts of it's filled in, and it still goes to where it goes to. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and to lose the history of these places, you know, you've got uh, these people now that just take, smash things down, and you lose that history. You know, because greed takes over, doesn't it? And you know, people like Covent Garden and all them places, Covent Garden, where Covent Garden uh, is now, is not like it used to be where it was. But you still got Covent Garden, you still got the clubs, the bars, and all that. You know, spit filled in all the markets. You're still the same. But Brentford Market was special, mate. It was special. Because inside, you went inside, when you went inside the market, you had a bank uh, and it was all old and you went into the market itself, it was all cobbles. Under the arches, it was all cobbles. Massive, massive under there. Huge, massive. And there was all cast iron staircases going up to the offices. Old cast wrought iron staircases, all cut out, yeah? You know what I mean? And, and, and where we used to go, uh, where we used to feed, Go up the staircases and then um, jump down, jump down to to the other to the companies below it, and then and then and then go through the gate. And it was like nicking things, twenty four seven, and it, all that's gone. It's all gone now, you know. And all the people that that worked in the market, uh, that if they ain't got whatever they've got, they've all passed away. They've all passed away because they've got nothing to do. And there was an old boy who worked in the market. His name was Blower. I remember my black because they were calling Blower. He was like, like Blower. And he had glasses and he had the old fruit barrow, not the Lister, the old barrow, the old, yeah. And he used to get little jobs, mate. He used to run around the market and he was what? I think he was about 85, 90 years of age. And still go around that market. That market kept him alive kept him alive, never really loved him because he was 90 odd years of age and he was at old school. He could tell you stories. I wish, he, do you know, them people, you wish they was around now, yeah? Because to get him on a podcast and to tell you about the old stories that used to be, all the fightings and all that, you know what I mean? It makes you think, oh, you know, this man has got so much there to tell. Even 
even some of the greengrocers like you know and the porters that, that it was still around that not too many yeah can tell stories that i'd love to be able to get them on podcasts but they're all like senile or gone do you know what i mean they're all like uh you know, you know like me in a way yeah but yeah fantastic mate the fruit market was the best place to be you know uh i was lucky to be invited into it and be part of the family yeah because i told you that Brentford food market was very family orientated a closed shop yeah you couldn't get in it it was impossible to get in it but i was so lucky to get in there by a place like like that through colin through colin cracknell and terry woods and also through johnny wills because johnny wills got me in there yeah johnny wills got me in that market right and uh, I can never thank him enough for getting me in the market. He's dead. Rest in peace. But his brother, Ray Wills, is still alive. Ray's in uh, the Isle of Wight. He's, I don't know what he does. I don't know if he's got a shop or what. But he gets in contact with me through Messenger. Um, you know, and he's... Uh, he's the, all, the, all them green grocers, mate. You know, they must miss it. They must miss that life of getting there four or five o'clock in the morning. And finishing at one, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, and that's the that's your day, you know. And then they go out and do what they got to do. Big buy shops, and they fill the shops up with stuff they've nicked, and you know. And that's how they go forward. And they've all got big houses, and they've all got just moved on. And me, uh, like before, I took the wrong road, and wind up going in prison for the rest of my life. In a way, twenty six and a half years is like the rest of your life. In a way. It's the best part of your life you're losing. You're going in, as it's going in there as a kid, coming out as an old man, as such, yeah? But as long as you learn your lesson and you put it across and tell everybody else that what you can lose for, for doing what I did, I only, only hope that it helps people, helps people out, yeah? And they can listen to me and not go, ah, fuck that. Don't worry about that, mate. I ain't gonna get fucking caught. Cool. I've got plenty, I've got cars, I've got my houses. I've got my idea out there, fucking taking me. My mate yesterday, um, a very good mate of mine mate yesterday, let's say his name, he was at Winchester Crown Court, um, he got found guilty of a big uh, cannabis conspiracy cocaine charge, yeah. Um, thought that uh, he was gonna get off of it, uh, got found guilty, and you know, another friend of mine got not guilty, but he got found guilty, um, he's, saying that he's gonna get off an appeal through, through uh, miscarriage of justice, this, that, and the other. Um, you know, you know, and he got 18 and a half years. Yesterday at Winchester Crown Court, he got 18 and a half years with a big, massive, big confiscation order. And, uh, you know, and then I go to myself, fuck me. You know what I mean? You're thinking, what the fuck? You know exactly what he's got to go through, how long that he's got to go through it, uh, you know, it's not such a bad thing. It ain't like our robberies where you're banged up uh, more times than, than, than on sort a of drug thing because they've got a chance of getting decat quicker than you and getting released quicker than you. But you're still 18 and a half years. <sighs> got a wife, kids, you know, and uh, he's done what he's done to get money for everyone, for the wife and the kids and the family, but at home and everything. But just done the wrong thing, told the wrong people, and got yourself 18 and a half years, mate. And I just feel so sorry for him, yeah, I'm gutting for the kid. I feel like, you know, he's got to go for all this shit that I went through. You know, it makes you think, listen to me, boy. Whatever you're doing out there, think about the consequences of it all, yeah? Because really, at the end of the day, you know, if you ain't got someone like I got, I got a guy called Terry Ailey, that this geezer, He's like my brother, yeah. He he looks like he, he me and him, uh, he just put me in he's put me in the right direction and I've got everything to, to gain now and not to lose, yeah. So this is it anyway. This is bang bang way all. Please press the like button and subscribe and thanks very much to you for helping me out mate and being the best mate about about of mine. And my family, I love them all. My sister Diana, Jackie, Keith and Bobby, I love all my family. But, you know, we all fall out because uh, we're fools 
I mean, that, you know, it's funny that, that when your kids, yeah, when your kids strong bond, when you get older, you pull apart. It's crazy, I don't know why you just do. It's the same when your kids, uh, when you play, play in the playground and you play with black kids, um, light skinned kids, and you know, you're all together, you have a laugh, everyone's friends. And years down the line, 10, 15 years down the line, if you ain't bonded, you get to hate them because they are, they are, it's racist thing comes into it and it's all fucking shit. It's, I can't make it out how people can turn as kids, yeah, and no one knows. No one knows as a child it's wrong or right, yeah. You do things because you think they're right. Same with me, I was molested as a child because I thought it was right, and that's what happens in life. But anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail. Please press the like button, subscribe, and good morning, and have a nice day. Yeah, nice.